Hello everyone and welcome to Dr. Netflix Boo Extravaganza Scaryathon Episode Oh 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 I'm over here with my lovely host Elisa, my lovely girlfriend. Thought I was a co-host. Well, you're both the host and co-host. Okay. <laughs> Right now it's October 11th, and you know, I gotta let everybody know tonight is my birthday of this recording. And today, tonight was a very awesome birthday. I mean, today was a very awesome. Look at the commitment he has. <laughs> look at it, people. He's here on his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, and well, the reason why I call it Boo with Sapaganza because tonight, since it's still Halloween, we're still gonna do a movie review. But not just any movie review, we're going to review an entire horror series. And what series, you may ask? Ooh, ooh, it'll be the classic like Friday the 13th? No. Nightmare on Elm Street? No. Halloween? No. What, 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 Hellraiser? No. Children of the Corn! Oh, I, 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 was, I was getting to there. <laughs> I, I saw some spooky kids over there. Oh. <laughs> They're after us. They know we know. <laughs> the man. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was trying to build up, <laughs> but it's like, wait, what? Are you gonna review those movies? Yes, we're gonna review those movies, but you know, uh, they, they all can't be that bad, right? I mean, they all can't be that bad. I mean, for those of you who may or may not know, most of the Children of the Corn series is on Netflix, with the exception of the second one, which we very kindly watched for you to let you know if you should even bother renting it through Blockbuster or Redbox Blockbuster. Instant or... What, what yeah. is it? Where? Blockbuster Instant. Oh. You can buy movies and stream them on your... I'm sorry, when you say Blockbuster, where? <laughs> Blockbuster has evolved, okay? No. You may not see it. <laughs> but it's there. Oh, yeah, it's there. And you can still rent movies, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> it's evolved. It's, it's much evolved as... Fuck. I'm I mean, I'm still not going to pay four bucks to rent a movie from them just to watch it one time and stream it, but it's there. If you but want. But I'm just giving examples because you could also rent it on Amazon. Yeah, kind of cheat here a little bit, but, you know, it is for the people. The people. And it was a hell of a sacrifice that we made for you people to watch all eight of them. We're not even count the remake because, you know, I know. Oh, no remake. We're sorry. Yes, there is a remake of Children of Corn. You, you never heard about it, and you are, we're not going to know about it either, so, so yeah. So, you know what? Okay, we're going to start, but, like, before we start, I'm just going to say this. For each movie, we're going to take about five to ten minutes to talk about it. And let's say it's like after five minutes and we say whatever we want to say, we move on to the next one and so on and so forth. And you know what? We're gonna wrap up to everything of where like how we think about the whole ser uh, of how the whole, the whole series of the whole movie. So yeah. So you ready, Bit Girl? I'm ready. I'm ready too, so let's No. No 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 we, we're doing that. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not doing it. I'm saying let's go. Let's okay. boo this. Happy birthday. <laughs> I forgive that pun because it's your birthday. <laughs> the birthday boy gets away with everything. Yeah. Okay, so first up is the first Children of Corn movie, which is, well, about uh, a bunch of kids in Gatlin. We don't know exactly what happened. We kind of know exactly what happened. They all round up and kill every adult in that whole town. And, well, two couples go over there and... To see, you know, what's happened. Why these kids kill all these adults. And, yeah... <laughs> <laughs> so let's begin the review. <laughs> that was a very bad synopsis. And Can I add a little something? Yeah, sure. These kids are very religious. Oh, yeah. And they worship someone named He Who Walks, walks behind, behind the, the Rose. And there is one leader. He's a preacher and the he's little a, boy. Yeah, his uh, name is Isaac. Yes. And he has his right-hand man, which is the muscle. Malachi. Malachi. And what else? So, they have already been running the town for a good while now. Like three years. 
They, yeah, they had already been killed, the parents, so in case you don't know, they're already running the, the town, you know, they're living off the land, and, you know, they have these very strict rules, like you're not allowed to play or do any other things that kids do. You're not, you know, not, no, no electronics, none of that bullshit. And once you turn 19... Your, your time is up because you're no longer pure. So then you must sacrifice yourself to go and be with he who walks behind, behind the, the rose. Ropes. And you're, you're going to see this right now. These rules are very essential to the first movie. Let's remind that. These entire things are very essential for the first movie. I'll remind you of that. Then later on, you, you'll see why. Okay, and, well, let's talk a little bit more about the couple. They're yeah. on a road trip. Yeah. And they hit a kid that's trying to escape. Because not all the kids are happy being led by Isaac. Not all of them believe in the bullshit. And some of them do want to escape. So they're not all blind, you know. Uh, they're not possessed, okay? They're, they're not brainwashed. I mean, but, yeah, but most of them do follow along the bullshit. Some might do it. Because of fear and others because of belief. So this kid, he tries to escape and the couple hits him with their car. But, you know, he was already dead. After, yeah, I think Malachi already, like, sliced his neck or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, he was pretty much dead when they hit him. And that's what made them stop and look for help. And that's how they ended up in the predicament that they were in. Yes. There's a lot of good things about this movie. Like... I would say I do like the similar photography. I like the way it was shot and like how everything is. The, the other thing I do really enjoy was uh, the actor who played Isaac. I thought he was, I thought he was actually really good. It's, it's kind of like, I don't know what else he's been in besides, well, he's in part six. <laughs> Return as Isaac. Spoiler. You're giving too much away. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> But yeah, like overall, I think he's actually, I think he was a pretty good actor. Yeah, and I liked um, Malachi too because, you know, he was a different kind of character where he wasn't more religious, but he was more, you know, prideful and he looked like he wanted to take over and he didn't want to go yeah. by what Isaac said anymore. He was sick of being ruled by him. So he was pretty cool. And of course... You know, he has that one classic line. Outlander! Outlander! We have your woman! <laughs> so, um, he was pretty cool. And then there were two little kids that they were innocent. And they weren't forced to follow the rules. You know what? The one thing I do, the one that I guess is nitpick or like negative to say about it, at least for the first film, I didn't really like... The voiceover, the, the voiceover of like one of the kids, like you know, where he's like you know, pre he probably you know telling from like his oh, point. Oh, narrating. Of, yeah, he's narrating like a little bit. Uh, I liked it. And see, I guess, but at the same time, it's like, uh, like I feel like half and half with like, you. Know, I see like, uh, it's okay, but it didn't. I didn't feel like it really needed overall. Like we don't really know what's going on. We don't need to know. You know, we don't need like you know a little kid telling us like you know. But I guess like from that you can tell that it's it's not really about the couple that gets stuck there. It's more about the kids trying to get out, and that's what it really is. You don't really get to learn much about the couple. You learn more about the kids, and I think you form more of an attachment to the kids, and it does become helping not just themselves escape, but also helping the kids escape. The two little kids that don't want to be there oh and and also some a little fun facts over here and there the the wife is played by Limit Hamilton who was living in Hamilton you may ask she she plays Sarah Connor in uh the two Terminator movies and also the well the movie is based on a short story by Stephen King I would repeat that again the movie is based on a short story by Stephen King short 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 and yet they made an entire fucking franchise out of this movie. And so, sorry. I liked it. It's not really a scary movie. It's more of a laughable movie. Because it is kids trying to kill adults. But the funnier part to me about it, if I may, is more that the kids are actually scared of the male lead. Because Isaac. No. Oh. The male lead, the guy. Oh, yeah. The adult. Because he comes and he just has like a knife or something. You know, something simple. And it's like, 
let's say, ten of them surrounding him. And he lunges at, like, one of them with it, right? And they all back up, you know? And they all seem scared of him and weary of him when supposedly they're the bad guys and they're the ones in control. I can say something about that. I like it how, like, you know... It wasn't just like the little kids that, you know, come out and like kill everybody. It was, you know, the, the, the more older teenagers that do it. it I think what I liked about that because it felt like that, like they were more strategic about it. Anyway, I, I'm gonna say right now, like the reason why I don't like come out and play because it's all little kids. You can fucking just kick them and then they all be gone and shit. And at least in two of the corn, it's feeling more thought out. It feels more smart. With like you see the teenage, like they probably thought out the entire thing. Okay, you know we're gonna poison their coffee. You know the older kids, you know the teenager are gonna you know kill everybody. That's right in there. It's not just you know the little kids, you know, fighting you know the big adults. It's also like the, the teenagers are there. That, at least that's my reasoning of why I actually at least like that. Like, and you know what? I would say it's it's still a, it's still a good movie. It's a movie I don't absolutely go on my way to watch it. But but you know, if it's Halloween, I see, you know what? I probably made that exception. And you know, it is it is on Netflix, so you don't have to go out of your way if you have it, and you can just you know, watch it. It is a cult classic and that's the only reason why I would recommend watching it. I personally don't want, like watching any movies that were made before the 2000s. That's just me. Shameless. And yeah, to me the only reason to watch it is just because it's a cult classic. And I mean, it's not scary at all. Yeah. So don't expect that. It is, there are like funny parts about it, but it is a well-made film. So you're waiting to give it? Yeah. Um, my rating is, you know, watch it when you get the chance. Yeah, what you know, I always say watch it when you're bored. Yeah, whenever you get the chance, and if, you, if you're going to do a Halloween marathon, you know, make that a part of it, and maybe you can make it, like, the last one. Yeah. So, you know, it takes the edge off a little bit, and you have a good laugh. Yeah. And you don't feel so spooked out. Alrighty, so now we're going to do the second one. So, Pippa Girl, uh, your synopsis of the second movie. Okay, so this movie is the aftermath of the first movie. So this is this shows what happens to the kids after he who walks behind the rose is defeated. Now they have to go into the next town over, and some of the people in that town will be taking a kid in. To take care of them while I guess they figure out what to do with it. So during this, there is a whole news frenzy. And, you know, everyone's reporting on it. And one down on his luck reporter with his son ends up heading over there. And he ends up heading over there late. So when he gets there, he wants to find a different story. He wants to do a different take on the story because everyone else pretty much already reported on it. So he wanted to do something different. So he stuck around a little bit longer. And with his son. Yeah, with his son, who he has never had to take care of. But his mother went on, like, honeymoon or something. So, Some bullshit. So, yeah, now the dad's stuck with him. Not that he really wants to spend time with his son because he never has but he's you know he's gonna do it anyway and well yeah like uh the rest like uh, i guess uh, some of the kids they have apparently they still worship you know he who walks behind the rose and well uh now a new kid's like the new leader like yes. the new isaac i guess a uh, spoiler well I, I don't know really a spoiler <laughs> apparently isaac dies or not i'm not quite sure the fuck happened yeah <laughs> but you know, isaac does come back to return. life malachi Dog. kills him malachi kills isaac because he's sick of being led by him and then uh, isaac comes yeah, back he comes back and goes malachi. malachi he wants you to malachi choked him out <laughs> and then malachi died so <laughs> so now um some of these kids are still believers and they they want to continue their little cult. And, well, yeah. <laughs> uh. So there are so many things about this movie. Here's what I have to say about it. Yes. This movie, it leaves more questions than answers for me. Usually a sequel will kind of tell you, like, 
why this is happening and like gives you more of a reason. But see, I think you know, with sometimes some children would do that, like this particular one. I think it should even like do that because like, well, what does it need to be explained? You no, know, parents already know, like, you know, he who walks behind the rose, like, well, apparently <laughs> that shit is real. And it was, I think, because mostly because of Isaac. You know, Isaac can talk a good game. It'd be like in Empire Brainwash the whole kids and yeah. You know, but the question is, how did Isaac become like that? Whoa. But you're right, it doesn't have to be explained because it's already kind of something that happened. So if you wanted to continue the story, you could because you do have the previous, supposed, previous followers that still aren't over what happened and still don't like adults because they are still brainwashed. You know, that doesn't go away yeah. if you, they really believe. Now, they did offer an explanation several explanations well in this one the explanation they gave was that adults are tarnished they're not innocent and they fuck with the land basically the land is not pure because of them and kids need they get punished for their father's sins so that's why they have to get rid of the parents now this seemed like honestly the way it was presented by but, a native american slash, how do you know that was a native slash, american his character was a Native American. Well, his character was. I don't believe that. that. Well, his character was. That's what matters. <laughs> was he dark-skinned? Oh, well, yeah, but so, is, but so Latin people are dark-skinned. Well, he's believable. <laughs> Sorry, you look like black. I'm not making some kind of race comment over there. There are Hispanic that look pretty black. <laughs> but I'm saying his character played an Indian. Whether he was actually Indian or not, it doesn't really matter. Because it's not like he was a white pasty man with red hair and freckles pretending to be a native american true at least it was not johnny okay. Depp. so well yeah like that like that was one of the explanation about the indian apparently the other explanation was that oh well apparently the corn is oh yeah yeah it was like somehow like tarnish whatever is poison to the air and you know it affects it affects the children. That's the whole reason why. Well, okay. That yeah, they see hallucinations and they start going crazy. Like basically, for three years. Apparently. Basically, everybody starts going crazy, but it affects children the most. But see, let, let's think about that. You know, like pretty much in the first children corn, like this. You know, everything be happening was happening for three years. I think those kids would be fucking dead <laughs> after those three years. <laughs> And it's kind of like, you gotta choose one. You can't go with both, you know? But in the end, the Indian, the Native American, is killed. And in the end, he comes back to life. For have one moment. To rejoin the earth or whatever, because he sees truth. Some bullshit. Stupid so. bullshit like that, that honestly didn't even need to happen. So we kind of get more of the idea that it, it is something supernatural. But it's just so stupid that they put two ideas out there. I would say that, like, as a sequel, I think it doesn't really do a good job. But I would say the movie as more, like, you know what? It's fun. It's really stupid. But I think it's, it's fun if you have, like, a, a drink night with your buddies and be like, you know, I want to watch something, like, really fucking stupid. Yeah, you know what? Show them the corn, too. There you go. Because it's it's dumb. And I swear, like, there's something about it, like, wow, this is pretty damn dumb. Like, okay, with, like, the, of how they choose, like, the next kid to be, like, the new leader. Which now they're gonna be the whole staple of the of the whole entire franchise. That one kid that's gonna be the whole leader of this entire cult of children. That's gonna be the whole staple of this entire movie, a uh, franchise. Yeah, okay, sure. Why not? Okay, that's fine. It's just funny how they pick them off. Like, uh, like I swear, it's like uh, the way uh, I'm trying to think a uh, uh, Dave Chappelle like of his little thing in his stand up where he's like uh with his uh as uh, uh, Bill Clinton going like uh. Hey you, come on here, suck my dick. <laughs> That's way how it was picked off. Like, uh, hey you, you're the new leader. What? <laughs> That's how I was that. Because <laughs> I felt like it. I thought I felt like it was. Yeah, like, there was nothing really special about the new leader. That's why we don't even mention him. We barely even remember him. I I do kind of liked him. Like he he was very enthusiastic. I'm like, okay, at least they brought that into it. Oh, and I think we forgot about something else funny. What? The son that he ends up falling for one of the girls in the town. <laughs> I still like that. Where like the chick is like, I love you. <laughs> like, bitch, we Be barely know this each other. This is because he's trying. Like he joins the cult, and it's questionable if like he really truly joined them or if he just kind of joined them out of fear like he was playing along so they wouldn't kill him but they were telling him to kill the girl 
Okay, he said, like, he's hesitating, and I still love that part, like, I love you, and the one thing I caught to my time, bitch, we hardly know each other, <laughs> I like your explanation of it, it's like, bitches will say anything, <laughs> uh, like, yeah, this, it's, it's a dumb movie, it's a dumb follow-up, but I like it because it's dumb, and it's, you know, you can make fun of it, it's, it's fun, I don't watch bad horror movies on purpose, that's, that, you know, one birthday party, of your uncle Christian was to just watch bad horror movies. That's the type of shit he's into. He likes to watch bad horror movies and watch them. Maybe with some friends. Like, I don't want to do that shit alone because, like, I'm the. <laughs> I'm editor. sure you do. <laughs> uh, maybe I want under the influence of whatever. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, like me, for me, like I just wouldn't even bother watching it at all. It's really not worth it. Yeah, you're right. Like, I would say why she's like during. When you're having sex. Me too. I I have this. But you know, it, if you have that one drunk night with you a couple of friends, you're like, oh, I want to watch something stupid. Uh, if it's not, it's on Netflix. Then go watch it on Netflix. I would I would uh, say that. Do you want my honest opinion on that? Yeah. There are way stupider horror movies on Netflix. They have a whole B horror movie um genre that they have on Netflix. Yeah. You can do way better for a stupid horror movie. You're right. I'm just saying, like, you know, if that one night it comes on, and, you know, if you, if each time was like, just quick, yeah, there you go. Okay, so up next, it's the Turtle Corner 3, Urban Harvest. Okay, so pretty much the movie take place in Chicago. I'm guessing it's Chicago. Yeah, I think it was Chicago. I uh, where they got these two brothers. One, uh, what was the older brother name? I forgot. I don't know. <laughs> okay, but like the younger brother name is Eli, that's so far I remember. And well, guess what? Eli is pretty much the, the new Isaac. Pretty much. Oh, but it assumes that like he's been around this entire thing for a very, very long time. And uh, now he goes to the city and grows new corn in some soil. Uh, and now he's going to corrupt the children of, I guess, whatever school he's in. There's like a, a, a Christian church or whatever. It, well, really, he like possesses them. Yeah. It's more magical than anything. And the reason why we say that is because when he dies, all the children revert back to normal yeah and they're kind of like what the fuck just happened i would say if i could compare like chosen corn 3 to anything it's the nightmare on elm street 3 the dream warriors of horror movies series and that kind of sense because like you know when er, when people you know watch you know nightmare on elm street you know is either watch the first one because it's a classic or you watch the third one because that is is that good of a classic. This is the way the best way to kind of explain this. Like the this third one, I I would say it's pretty damn good. I say you know what? It's not it's enough thing here that like although there's some things that it just kind of silly, it still feels like it kind of stands on its own. And even though you know pretty much in the corner, well, well, they bring it to fucking Chicago. It's like well, it that's so silly. But at the same time, they kind of they do explain things enough pretty well. It still shot pretty well. I thought it was I thought it was actually a pretty good shot. And they do some things here and there's there's some there could be some here things silly and some things even at the end gets a little more sillier. But overall, <laughs> I thought I thought it still was actually really good. Okay, for on my end, this movie it kind of reminded me of the orphan or what's the other one? The omen. The omen, where you have an evil devil child, because it turns out that Eli is is not just an ordinary child that was adopted from Gatlin and then readopted a second time apparently because these two, the brothers, they're not blood brothers. Eli was adopted and apparently he was adopted from Gatlin. Then he he killed the other guy, the brother's father. Yeah. Turned into a scarecrow. I got it. That was still pretty cool, yeah. like how they did it. I really enjoyed the beginning of it because he did end up killing the father and I thought I thought it was a, a pretty good movie. At the end it did get a little bit silly. There was a silly monster and kind of bad effects. It's kind of like I, I want to explain this. Okay. Can, can I explain yeah, it? Okay. Okay. Now, 
Okay, at the end of the movie, at the 15 minute movie, I swear to God, you have to watch it because it's the best. Okay, apparently, like, uh, I forgot the kid, like, the older brother, and now, gonna, now he's gonna fight Eli. And Eli started shooting Hadoukens out of nowhere. It becomes like a fucking video game, like Street Fighter. That's a, yeah. He becomes Street Fighter, and he's still keep going Hadouken, Hadouken, <laughs> and throughout the whole thing, and fucking the kid like he blocks it. <laughs> but you have to add in that side of or sound effect on your own, just so you know. <laughs> I had Chris by my side, so he was adding in the side effect for me. The sound effect. <laughs> the side effect. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and like and and we you know and it seems you know like well yeah the kid is dead you know like okay look like everybody's gonna go back to their homes. Fuck no the absolute best part of this whole damn movie had to be that fucking creature a creature comes out of nowhere the only thing i think like well maybe it's it lets you assume what's a you know and because okay throughout like at least the children of corn 2 and the first one you know we know that like some kind of creature is hidden underneath like in the corn that's all we know about well we don't know we don't even know if it's a creature or not we know something's there but we have no idea what it is and Children of Corn 3, it's a fucking creature. And it's like, it's so 180 out of fucking nowhere. It pops out and start killing all the kids. I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. This is probably the single best thing. Just because of like, where the fuck this came from? This is because of Children of Corn. <laughs> and there was a part where he lifts up one of the girls. And it is so obvious that it's like a fucking clay doll. It is so fucking hilarious. That's why it seems like they just ran out of a budget. But what I still I was, love that. <laughs> what I was trying to say was, um, they made up this whole origin story about Eli that basically he's been alive since the '60s or some shit, and he's been like a part of this whole Children of a Corn thing forever. So it's kind of like, well, what the fuck? Because then why wasn't he the leader in the first one, and where was he in the second one if he's supposed been you know the the leader of this basically he has magic he can he can do things he has little fucking voodoo dolls and shit that he can hurt people with no no, no no that, that was in the second one no that was the third one no the second one remember he was sitting in a church yeah and he wasn't was, he doing something no that was the, the second one it, of the priest yeah because they were in church and he was like Giving a sermon in school? No. Oh, he, no, you're right. Okay, that was the second one. My apologies, people. But he was magical. Yeah. There's just so many. They all get blurred together. But <laughs> I have to tell you, this is not like a Children of the Corn movie. Like, it's not too relevant from Children of the Corn. It really breaks away from the original mythology. So I don't consider it a Children of the Corn movie because in this movie, it did seem like they were going to kill the adults. He was building up his cult, but it just didn't feel like a Children of the Corn movie because they weren't brainwashed. They were pretty much possessed by him. And once he died, basically, they were just kind of like, what the fuck just happened? You know, they and they no longer believed in what they believed before. So it was much stronger. Yeah. Whereas the originals didn't have any magic. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely right. So I think that kind of concludes our feelings right about this so, third one so what are you giving okay i gave it a three like watch it when you get the chance i do think it's worth watching just don't have the expectation that oh this is part of the children of the corn you don't even have to watch children of the corn yeah like the original one or the second one in fact it would probably be better if you didn't even watch those and then just watch this one alone because it's pretty much a story all on its own but it's a pretty good movie i liked it even though the end got a little bit silly you know at least it gets fun for a little bit i guess but i did i did enjoy the story overall uh, uh you know i'll give it a i pretty much give it a, you know watch when you're bored but like i would say like if you really want to like you know watch the first one just skip the second one Come back to the third one. So yeah, now the fourth one. You, you can ex you can explain it. Okay. So to me, this movie seems to have nothing to do with the Children of the Corn series, other than just the name. Yeah, the title and the creepy children. That's it. <laughs> 
and a cornfield, which wasn't really relevant to the story whatsoever at all. So you have a girl that she returns from college. She's a med student. And she comes back basically just to help bring her agoraphobic mother back to health. Now, in case you don't know what agoraphobic is, it's a person that's afraid to step outside. We, we kind of explained that in like in, in bench warmers. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But... Yeah, for those who, you know, probably just come right in. Yeah, um, if we, it's just a, you know, a reminder or whatever. Someone who's afraid to go out, outside. So, when she gets back, she needs money, so she starts working for a local doctor. And then, all of a sudden, all the children get sick at the same time, and they have the same exact thing, a really high fever. And they all get better, and then they start losing their teeth. Or the yeah, outer tooth, whatever. Yeah. And then uh, apparently it's all because like some drunk dude opened up this well that like has to do with some kind of spiritual uh, preacher kid. And now he wants all the children so he could be resurrected back. And yeah. Yeah. This movie was pretty freaking confusing because it has nothing to do with any of the children. But movies. even if it did have something to do with the children of the corn movies, okay. So basically, you know. Know, this um this preacher this preacher kid mm -hmm. that was killed and his soul was reserved in a well the well gets open and then he comes back and then he possesses all the children but he didn't just possess them he possessed them with other kids who yeah. were these kids we don't know yeah we have no fucking idea we know the names of like three of them but we don't know who they are or where the fuck they came for or why the fuck they're possessing these kids yeah <laughs> I'm just going like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to say I wasn't really too fond of this movie. I wasn't like, bored by it, but it was more the thing like, you know what, it feels like too much of a typical like horror movie. But I, I wasn't exactly bored by it. There was nothing there that was like, okay, like I kind of like some of the kills like here and there. Although like the one kill with like the, the old dude where he gets sliced up. I'm like, okay, that seems very questionable. Yeah, I mean this movie, it also had like a lot of those false scares or like a lot of bad dreams more than like actual people getting killed. Not too many people got killed. And, you know, it was it was just a weird freaking movie. It was like this kid that was seeking a vengeance because, you know, the townspeople killed him. It was I mean, nothing, nothing to do. And he who walks behind the road is not, even not yeah, nothing to do. Shit. Like, you know what? I think the best way to explain this movie is that it had, like, an idea for, like, some other, like, horror movie. But because, like, you know, I think this is a time when, like, Dimension uh, films, I guess, like, now kind of own the right to this franchise to say, you know what? Fuck it. Just slap that shit on to turn the corn. We don't give two fucks. We don't care. There. Children of the Corn 4. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as a Children of the Corn movie, it, it totally failed. So, you ready to rate it? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't have to say. Is I was like, yeah. It's not a bad movie. It's, it's more like a typical horror movie. And yeah. you can definitely watch one of way better quality that's more recent. It, the, the one thing I would say for... Most of the children and corn movies, with the exception of like two, they all shot like pretty well with actually some really good cameras. I don't want to have positive to say about each of these movies <laughs> because it's like, oh, you know what? They all look pretty good. You know, the exception of two, because two look like it, it have more of the kind of stigma of like, of, um, it go, um, straight to like a video l of way because, uh, because like, at least for me, what I know how the 90s movies look like, it doesn't look that poorly uh quality to it i mean i mean it, it wasn't exactly bad but at the same time it's like it was not like, exactly great either it was like eh, it's like something in the middle but like you could tell like you know there were like more better qualities of these kind of films than than how it presented in two and like i said before i thought it was shot pretty well um i forgot the actress name but like she's uh, it's like a famous actress i forgot i know she was in king kong that's it I forgot. Uh, Nomi Watts. There we go. No more. No, was no. It really? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. And then, yeah. So, yeah. I'll give it, like, I want to say give it a two, but then I'm like, eh, you know what? I'll give it a one. Just play it during sex. I feel like it's good for her. I gave it a two because I feel like it is watchable, but you're not going to want to pay 100% attention to it because it is kind of, like, typical. But that's only if you don't mind watching old movies. 
or older movies because I know it's not that old, but it is like 20 years old. If you don't mind watching older movies, if that kind of quality and, you know, the clothing and stuff doesn't bother you because it just because I just feel like you can relate less to like people that don't dress like you. But, you know, but or that don't dress modern, and they don't, not to us. What is what is modern? I don't think there's modern no- is, you know, current day. I guess. And uh, you, you, I mean, how can you relate to someone that's dressed all in neon and, like, baggy as shit clothing? Eh, who they are as a person, like, I don't Yeah, even, but at the same time, it's a little off. I, I could, I can, I think the best example, of, the, the best example, I can relate to Ed Wood in, like, in a personal kind of level, because, like, you know, he's a, he's a strongly filmmaker. He's not a good filmmaker at all. Don't get me wrong. He was actually, he's known as the worst director of all time, but I, you know what, I can relate to him because, you know, he had a dream. He made that dream come to reality. He did it of whatever means necessary. At the end, it was not good at all, but it's like a person, you know, from the night, someone who was, like, a around the 1950s or 60s he made a dream possible and I say you know what I can relate to that I'm hoping that my shit is like uh, <laughs> better than whatever he has but see I can relate to that and that's you know he's from 1950s well to me just like I don't know I I watch horror movies to be scared and really you only to me I only get scared of like a horror movie if it seems like it can actually happen that makes it all the more scarier and if they're dressed like modern, I guess that kind of helps make it more um, real. So we're ready for the next movie. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, ah, ah, let me let me do the plot get, uh, Okay, here's what you know about part five. This is all you need to know. Oh, a, uh, one of the kids is possessed, and he's now the leader of uh, a cult. That's it. A bunch of quote unquote teenagers come by to the town, not even, it's not even fucking gallons, fucking Nebraska, probably, I don't know anymore. And you know what bullshit happens? The end. That's all we need to know. It's, it's a sort of a porn you movie. I liked that movie because of um, the Kill Bill guy and the other guy. No, you, I, I'll explain my reason. I, I would say what I actually enjoy about this movie, but. Well, fuck this movie. <laughs> let me do a little... Fuck this movie. Let me do a little bit better of a synopsis. So, this movie is about, like he said, there is some cult going on. But what makes this movie... First of all, again, this is not much of a children of the corn movie. He who walks behind the rose is present in this. There is the corn. Yeah, this movie, like, it doesn't, again, doesn't stay true to the mythology of the first one. It completely goes off the rail. In Ooh. fact, these kids, yes, 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 okay? You know why? You want to know why? Because these kids aren't trying to kill all the fucking adults and fucking rule their own world. No, they're trying to just do their own thing and ignore the adults, and if the adults try to shut them down, you know what they're going to do? They're not going to fight. They're going to fucking kill themselves. They're going to commit a mass suicide. This is why that's not children of the corn. That's not the way they do it, damn it. I just I want to rattle your feathers and it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> so, in this one, we have some college kids, a group of college kids. And that, Eva Mendez is in this. And they're going to dump their friend's ashes in his hometown. And I guess it's hometown. I don't know. Fuck yeah. It is. <laughs> it is. And you know, they're the normal college students. One of them is No, they're they're not normal college. Well, they're the bad ones or the, you know, they're the typical free horror. spirited they're the horror. horror. They're the horror of college them. kids. You know, one of them is putting blow up dolls around the town for his friends to follow him so they know where to go. But yeah, Eva Mendez, she plays the uh horror. the widow. <laughs> She plays a whore. <laughs> she plays the grieving widow really badly. She plays a whore. That's all she plays. <laughs> yeah, she ends up having sex with one of the good friends of the her boyfriend that just died. And then she ends up flirting with one of the kids in the cult. No, no, no. Wait, no, baby girl, baby girl. I put it in quotation. Kids. Yes, because... He looks like fucking 30. There weren't really any young kids in this Ooh, cult. There were some. There were like- some, but the main ones that were shown. Because you have the people in the cult that actually have roles and actually speak and actually have names. And then you have the day players that are there just for show. And that's where you see the younger kids. But 
The main ones are adults and they're tall as shit. They're fucking monsters. They're taller than the fucking protagonist. You know what? I would say with like one exception, like the one tall, like the one tall case, you know what? I can see him at least baby, maybe being like at least 17 or 18 because there are like... But he's probably just tall. You know, he, you know that's probably what it is. He's probably, he's just fucking big and <laughs> tall and shit. And... Uh, the one thing I can say for me is like a redeemable quality of this movie. If there's only one thing there is, well, two. Technically there two. is. There is. There's two at least for me. You know, you have, you know, for those, you know. Uh, there is Eva four- Mendes killed herself? Fuck her. They, they, that was she gave name. herself so she can be with he who walks behind the rose. No. No, that, that was not even found fun. Her purpose. That, that was that not was, even good. That was fun for me because I couldn't stand the bitch. I, I, I was not satisfied with that. I'm like, no. All dogs go to heaven. <laughs> No, see, the the only thing that was good is uh, two things with one. Uh, two, two of the things were good. And that was Fred Williamson, because he was being Fred Williamson, the one black dude. Because he was, he was cool, because he was being Fred Williamson. He was being the hammer, chewing his fucking cigar and shit. I'm like, yeah! And you have David Carradine, a.k.a. Bill, from Kill Bill. And I would say... He put on a really good performance. At the same time, I was thinking to myself, like, oh, gosh, I can't. And then they faced off. <laughs> that was, like, probably the best part in the whole fucking movie where they they fight each other but it's not even a fight like it's David Carradine and he fucking explodes I'm like yes oh my god yes finally there's a purpose that's it no <laughs> yeah mind you there aren't many good parts nope. in the movie this movie it tries to get sentimental and it plays those little violins and makes it seem so sad and it's also so many really dramatic it's parts like, uh, uh? What? I don't... It's a... You don't give a fuck, okay? They do it very badly. They tried. Not hard enough. And I guess something that was potentially interesting was that coincidentally, one of the girls that was with the college kids, her brother had joined the cult. And that's why they ended up going after these kids and trying to talk to him. Because if not, they wouldn't have bothered. You know, they were told to leave town by the black one. I'm sorry, I don't know his name. I know Fred you said Williamson. It. Okay. Fred the Williamson, hammer. he was the sheriff or whatever, and he told them to leave town. And the girl's like, I'm not leaving without talking to my brother. And then the rest of them are like, fuck that, we're going no, no. home. These ex- kids ex- are freaking. <laughs> Except the one that's like, oh, okay, well, I guess. So, because, you know, he he's trying to get that pussy. He's, yeah. he's in the friend zone, because but he's trying to get that pussy. We didn't say this, but two of the friends already died in the beginning. The blow up doll kid and his girlfriend. Kid. They were already killed. Okay. And, you know, they had their chance to leave. They were going to leave. The bus came and they're like, you know what? We have to back this stupid bitch up. So they go back the stupid bitch up and they all died. And it was pretty pointless because... They're all going to kill themselves anyway. Yeah, they were all going to kill themselves anyway. So it's like, what's the point of all this? I know. I, I like how like, one of the rules has kind of changed. Like, it's not when you're 19 and they, they killed you. It's when you're 18 then they kill you. It's like, well, apparently, no, one of them is not. Apparently, one of them is uh, like 25, apparently, because he doesn't look 18 at all. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a Children of the Corn movie. It wasn't a good horror movie, even on its own. Are we ready to rate this bitch? God, fuck this movie. Don't bother. Yeah, that means it's a zero, as in it. we don't give it any rating at all. It doesn't even deserve one measly star or even half a star. It just sucks. Unless you want to see Eva Mendes die, it's not worth it. No, even and then. And you can just skip to that part. Even then, it's not even worth it. Like, I would say, you know what? Just YouTube the part with Fred Williamson versus David Carradine. That's like the single best part of the whole movie. That's it. That's all you need to watch. Okay, so. I don't really care. <laughs> I know you don't care. I'm like, ooh, Fred Williams in the hammer. Like, talk to these fucking kids. <laughs> okay, so. Part six. Isaac. Six, re- six, six. Isaac returns. Which, uh, the dude who plays Isaac... Actually returns. And he actually wrote the movie. Well, he stars as a very agent Isaac. I'm like... I, well, first of all, I have to say, I feel like he watched all of these fucking, um, sequels and, 
you know, third, fourth, whatever part. He probably saw them and he's like, what is this bullshit? I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I have to do it justice. <laughs> They're making me look bad. So I think... Dimension Films. <laughs> Dimension Films. He wants you, Dimension Films. <laughs> yeah, he just, I'm sure he couldn't let it go on. And it was a very decent movie. And it had a lot to do with the Children of the Corn, and it actually made sense. So, here's the synopsis. Basically, it turns out he's alive, but he's in a coma. Yeah. And there's a prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. That, that uh, some chick is going to come. She's going to be the new chosen, and well, she's going to carry the, a, berry, a baby. Basically, apparently, we didn't know this. And they actually, uh, this was also mentioned in the fifth one, which I guess we forgot to mention. Apparently, these kids were having sex, getting married, and having kids this whole time. Because apparently, Isaac had a wife and had a child before he died. And apparently the other kids were doing this too. So she was the firstborn child. And the prophecy stated that the firstborn female child would return. And when she returned, Isaac would awaken. And then her and the firstborn male would have sex and have a kid. And that would be the chosen one. And the lineage would continue. I gotta say, like, I was like, I say to myself, like, please let it be a good movie. We was watching the first one. I'm like, please let this be a good movie. It's really hard. Now, we, while we didn't watch movie after another after another we didn't watch them all in one day we did space it out a little bit but it was just so hard watching all of these children of the corn movie i didn't want to come to this podcast and have to say that every single children of the corn after the first one is a piece of shit because that's kind of sad you know the whole point of this is you know, to sift through all of them and be able to find something good for the audience to take away. And the sixth one actually does that pretty well. I, I was, if I can compare it to another like horror series, it's it kind of did like a Halloween H two O where it's like, you know what, you need to watch the other movies. You can watch Halloween and not Halloween H two O. It's like this: like you watch Children of Corn and skip right to. Children of Corn, Eyes Returns, and that's it. That's all you really need to watch because Children of Corn Part Four. I mean, <laughs> six. <laughs> part six. I would say it's still it, it's really good. It's really decent. It was set up nicely. It was suspenseful, and the ending was not predictable at all. Like that was a huge plot twist, and I don't want to reveal it for the audience. I don't know if you mind like not revealing it. See, I kind of want to. Was like you know what? No, but like I. I I gotta say, I do like a little plot twist. That, that was a pretty cool plot twist. It had a very good plot twist, and it was set up very good. And just, it strung you along. It kept you interested. It stayed true to the original Children of the Corn, even though it added the mythology of having the wife and having a firstborn child. And having Isaac looking like 50 years old. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, completely forgivable. You know, I would hope that he was going to kill himself in the end because he's not pure anymore. He's over 19. And so was the other bitch that was watching over him. They should have killed themselves at the end. But you know, at least, at least, you know what? It but we don't know if they were planning on or not, so I'm not gonna hold that against them. It wasn't mentioned, and they were killed. But you know, I'm you not get, gonna. You can, you can assume that, like, say, and you say, you know what? You know, like, he said, what? This is it. My time has come, and he can just kill himself. Yeah, it just seemed like they wanted to see the prophecy f fulfilled, so that they prophecy. could prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. prophecy. <laughs> The prophecy fulfilled so that they could move on. We don't know if that's true or not, but we're just going to assume it and give it the benefit of the, the doubt. So, yeah, like, if, if you want a true Children of Corn sequel, just skip the others and come to, and just come to part six. I'll say that. I, I'll give it, I, I'll give it, you know, watch it, you know, move, you know, watch when you're bored. I'll give it that. Yeah, I am actually giving it a higher rating. I think you should watch it when you get the chance i honestly think you should watch the original and then watch this one they're truly the the sixth one is truly worth watching i really enjoyed it and it's like the only children of the corn that actually comes through for me yes 
Yes! Alright, and now we come to Children of Corn Part 7, Revelations, which it's about this one lady uh, coming from California, which is... Actually, it's kind of funny because, like, in the last one, like, the, the prophecy uh, uh, chick come from California, and so did, and now so has uh, this particular uh, chick who come from California. And, yeah, she come to Nebraska because I'm guessing Nebraska, I mean, doesn't really explain where the fuck she is, so I'm just going to guess uh, Nebraska. And apparently, like, uh, uh, she goes over there to try to find, you know, where happened to her grandmother, and corn started rising up, and creepy kids out of fucking nowhere, and it something had to do with this religious cult, but, like, it had nothing to do with, like, the actual children of the corn. I mean, it's kind of mentioned. I think it did mention it, yeah, men it, it does mention who who walks beyond the road but other than that is like but it didn't seem relevant even though he was the one being worshipped it didn't seem to matter that much and this was another one where the creepy children they had actually come back to life yes stupid 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 yeah even the way to explain like huh Okay, and here's another thing. The reason why they were dead is because they were going to be shut down. So they locked themselves up in a building and set themselves on fire and all burned to death. And the grandmother was part of that cult and she ran away. And they just came back to basically punish her so that she can die. And technically, because she lived, her daughter and her granddaughter weren't supposed to be alive. So they needed to die too. Stupid. Stupid, stupid. Stupid. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah, like, Michael Ironside is this, and he doesn't do that much. I'm like, aw. I, I want to see, like, Michael, because he looks so cool. It's like, oh, he does something like, really awesome. They're going to come, like, at the end and be all, be gone, demon children. And, but no, he's like, they're like, uh, get the fuck out of here. And just walk away. I'm like, oh, fine. <laughs> Shit. The grandmother even tries to warn the stupid bitch and, like, writes it on the fucking wall. Like, leave get away from here escape and what does she do she keeps on investigating good job yeah so eh, like it's one of the movies i can say like it's not terribly bad i mean shit after watching children of corn part five it's like you know what anything could have been the better movie fuck <laughs> Yeah, uh, as a Children of the Corn movie, it definitely failed. God knows what it had to do with Children of the Corn, but uh, it was a bit of a mystery. It, it did keep you interested. The children were creepy, a lot creepier than all of the other movies. So that's one thing they had going for them. You know, mm. they went as far as, to me, they went as far as creepy kids go. Yeah, I just see it as like, eh, eh. But there, eh. we didn't see any preaching going on. The kids barely talk. They mostly just laugh. Hell, even the fucking leader comes like it. He comes out at the fucking end. He's like, oh, well, you better die. And it's like, oh, well, shit. Um, yeah. The ending no. was super anticlimactic. Like, it was just weak. And it, like, it's like, that's it. You know when the main character gets away a little bit too easily and you're like, okay, something's wrong here. Something has to go wrong because I know it's not going to end like that. And then something goes wrong. It doesn't happen here. It just ends. Yeah. <laughs> like there was no big monster out of fucking nowhere. Nothing. There's no shit in the corner three, that's for sure. So yeah, we want to even go writing Bippy Girl. Sure. I gave it... As a normal movie, not as a Children of the Corn movie, I gave it, like, watch it when you get the chance. And I was kind of conflicted between that and watch it while you're playing, like, Angry Birds. But it was, it was interesting. It kept me strung along. I just wouldn't have watched it as a Children of the Corn movie. I'll give it a, I'll give it a one. <laughs> watch it. <laughs> what, play it during sex. You know what, I, I knew, I'm going to call that movie Shenanigans. You know what I'm going to call it Shenanigans? Because... Uh, the lady gave, like, a quarter for, like, the kids to play fucking uh, House of the Dead. I'm like, no, no, bad movie, bad. It's not a fucking quarter, it's a fucking dollar. I know that. I should know that. <laughs> that shit eats fucking your money up. I thought that's all I gotta say, yeah. <laughs> so now we come to the final movie. Woop, 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 woop. Children of the Corn, Genesis. You don't know how relieved we were to get to this damn movie. Paper Girl. Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Yeah. They bring, they bring Sonic into this. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> she's like, yeah, <laughs> she's looking at me. It's like I said, <laughs> like you, you stopped me because of that. Really, <laughs> really, you stopped me because of that. So, so yeah. Uh, you want to explain the plot synopsis? Uh, uh. Get my shit. Okay, so Genesis was done in 2011, so it's actually a pretty new movie. And they did do a remake before well, we this did. movie even came out. But well, we say fuck it. It's not on Netflix. We weren't going to bother. I mean, I was already fucking sick of these this series to begin with because most of them were irrelevant. And they brought in, like, magic and suicide and babies. And bullshit. Planting the fucking seed, my ass. That's fucking sick. Anyways, like, isn't that the purest thing about children that they don't think about sex? I mean, that's what I thought. That they don't know what sex is? Isn't that what corrupts? It? Well, Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> but I diverge. In Genesis. <laughs> Sega Genesis. Um, what's about? Okay, so we have a couple. Yes. That gets stranded on the road. And they're on their way to wherever. And they get stranded in the middle of the desert. So they go walking because they see some telephone poles. And they see some kind of shelter kind of place, I guess. It's or a something. house. Oh, yeah. Farm. Barely a farm. It's not really. I wouldn't call it a farm. It's just an old house. Singular. And they knock on the door. And the guy doesn't want to let them in. He says they don't have telephones. The woman gets mad. Because she was, she's been in the heat for a while. They're the only people around. She's pregnant and she doesn't want to deal with it. So she starts yelling and basically calling him an asshole and telling him if I get a miscarriage, it's all your fault. Women, am I right, fellas? Ow. <laughs> so, basically, he lets her in and him in. And we see him and his lovely mail order bride from the Ukraine. I thought it was Romania. No, she asked if she was Romanian. She oh. said she was Ukrainian. Ukrainian. Yeah. Now, this is one of those horror movies that could have been completely avoided by her just not forcing herself in when she clearly saw that he wasn't friendly and something wasn't right. Shit. Everything about this entire movie is saying, you know what? Maybe we should not be messing with any of this bullshit. Because basically what happens is as follows. The husband, he gets on the telephone and he's trying to get a tow truck, get a garage, get whatever so they can get the fuck out of there it doesn't end up happening because there's only one service available to them and the person is charging them nine hundred dollars the beautiful mail order bride is very friendly in wink, fact wink. No, no. <laughs> so friendly that she's like please take me with you and she starts unbuttoning her blouse letting her nipple peek out she, she's like would you fuck me she oh, grabs fuck. his groin because, of course, that's all male order brides know how to do. They offer sexual favors in order to get out of the situation that they're in, out of the country they're in or the city or who they're with. Damn these male order That's brides. their weapon. Whether she succeeded in fucking him or not, we don't know. But she tells the husband, oh, can't they stay the night? Because apparently there was a delivery man that would come and could give them a ride to a garage. So the husband says, okay, they can stay. But he lays down some very important ground rules, which were... Don't go in that particular barn. And don't no. wander off anywhere. He basically said, stay in your room. Don't leave the room unless you have to go to the outhouse. That's the only thing. Don't go wandering around anywhere. Don't go touching or looking into things that you're not invited to. I think that's a fair warning. Yeah. And, and, like, and like she can go and be like, oh, I didn't know. What do you mean didn't know? He just told yeah. you not that long I think ago. it's just basic respect that if he doesn't want you wandering around in his shit, you don't wander around in his shit because you don't know him. You think he's creepy. You think he's up to no good. You're pregnant and you need to protect your child so you don't want to get in any trouble. Well, the stupid bitch ends up having to pee because she's pregnant. And she goes to the outhouse. And then for no particular reason, she sees the garage and wants to go in it. Well, she it's, didn't, not, it's not. I was just a barn or something. Well, they, they called it a garage. That's why I call oh, it a garage. Okay. See, my thing is, in a normal horror movie, if you're going to go wandering around, it's because you hear something weird or you see something weird something attracts you 
For no reason at all. But, but for no damn reason, this bitch breaks this guy's rules. Even though she has another life to take care of, other than her own. And she goes and she wanders around. Then she hears a little boy. And she finds out that he's locked up. And now, you know, she being a whole thing like, you know, what if it's our little boy? What if it's our little boy? Yeah, she basically forces her husband, who really doesn't care that much, to go save the little boy and for them to escape. To where? I don't know. Maybe to, um, I, I don't know either. You know what? This movie, it's not even a children of corn movie. It's Shit. not. Shit. You know what? Part four was a more children of corn movie than this than Genesis was. Shit. There was no Sonic in there either. I'm, I'm particularly mad about that. <laughs> Like, at the beginning, like, it feels like a children of corn movie. That's the one thing I say, you know what? It feels kind of promising. Like, in the be- in the first five, ten minutes, it feels like a children of corn movie. Like, there's some kids in there. Like, they're killing all the, the whatever. Well, let's it's, clarify. It, uh, yeah. yeah, that it started out with a guy returning from home. He was at war. Mm-hmm. And he finds his parents and his fiance killed. And there are children there. And the children... Are like kind of creepy and then it looks like they try to kill him and they shove him out a window. And we're not too clear on if he dies or not or what really happens to him. Because then we cut to these people being stranded. And we don't really know what he has to do with the story or if oh, he was just he, the beginning. He's a preacher dude. I know but I'm saying like oh. when it starts out we don't oh. know. Like they reveal that kind of later on. That's one part I would say I liked about the movie. That it kind of like showed where he's coming from, like why he thinks kids are evil and whatnot, like why he had the little boy locked up. Although it doesn't make any much sense at the end. Yeah, at the end, like it really doesn't make sense because then like the, the I don't I, know, like I just, it was very unclear what was going on. Like it turns out that the little boy, I guess, is evil. He yeah. does bad things to people. Yeah, like but it, with magic, which makes no damn sense. Well, I mean, okay, up to okay, let's go with like the second one and like the third one and probably the rest beyond that. They all have magical powers except for Isaac. With the exception is like with Isaac, but you know, every you know, but you know, most of those kids did have some. They were all supernatural. Fuck, even the third one where the, that Eli kid just throw fucking Hadoukens at the fucking well, window. Eli was a special case because he was actually like they insinuated that he was pretty much the devil. I, I thought he was the he who walks behind the rose second well, hand he, man. Well, for all, well, he seemed more powerful than that. I mean, uh, like apparently he had been around for like fifty or sixty years, and who knows how much longer than that. So I mean, really, and he hadn't aged a day. <laughs> um, but like, but really, I don't. Did all the kids have? Howard, like, I mean, there were kids that were possessed and... Like I said, with the exception of, like, both, like, the first and the sixth. Well, kind of, okay. More towards kind of the end of what kind I of mean, happened. This is what, like, I, I have a problem with, though. Just the fact that the first one didn't have any magic. The only thing that had magic was he who walks behind the rose. And that makes sense. But other than that, the kids were just you know, ordinary, and even their leader was ordinary. He was just a preacher, and he spoke for who, you know, they were worshiping. So that, you know, that was okay. But then the rest of the movies kind of broke away from that, which it didn't make no damn sense. And that's what I have a problem with this whole series, that none of them really stay true to the first one, except for the sixth one. Yes, and you yeah. Well, to go, can I go back to Genesis? Well, you know what? Yeah, like nothing even say. Like I would say, fuck. You know, what? I just give my rating because I don't remember much about Genesis. It's more like, eh. Like it again. It, it it's the same thing with like the fourth one, where like, well, we don't have to do with this movie, or you know, even with the seventh one too. You know what? The fourth, the seventh, and Genesis is like they all had nothing to do with the movie. The only they say the only like. Ex- oh, and the fifth one too. You know what? Fuck. The fifth one, as bad as that was, had more to do with, like, Children of Corn than, well, than me, Genesis it, was. To me, if they commit suicide, then it has nothing, absolutely nothing to do. You're right, but I'm just saying, like, you know, even from even from that, it still was a Children of Corn movie compared to, like, Genesis or even Revelation. Well, you said that Genesis had the power to be the beginning. Yeah, you know what? Yes, like, 
it had okay the way i can say about genesis is like it had some potential or like okay the best fact of story of genesis is that it feel like a, a tv pilot kind of movie that like this is it because it's genesis you know genesis in the bible means like the beginning and it's, you know what maybe they have some kind of sort of plan that like they were going to like make a whole continuation with this particular setup to make more tuna corn movies with it even though they didn't yeah but that's what it felt like but they could have and that that was you know the fucked up part about it to me anyways so you ready to give it a rating i guess uh, i gave it a one just playing when you have sex i gave it a two just like you can watch it and like play angry birds or whatever all righty bit the girl whoo I mean, my God, it was a lot of movies that we did. A lot of them. I think we did a good job, and I hope you people appreciate the sacrifice we made. Now, let's actually talk about overall about this whole damn fucking series. Now, could you recommend this to watch this whole damn movie franchise whatsoever? Not if you want to be absolutely frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> The good news is, if you want to watch the Children of this Corn series, all you really have to do is watch the first, maybe the second, and the sixth one. That's really all you have to watch, and be, like, pretty satisfied with it. And you don't have to watch all seven, definitely not. Like, some of them held up on their own as horror movies, but I think one of the most frustrating things to me about this movie is, you know... Every single one of them, except for the first, second, and sixth one, are not com contingent on one another. And as individual movies, for example, the fifth one, there's a baby that was born from the cult. And th when they end it, they kind of insinuate that this baby is going to be someone or start something. So it kind of promises that the next movie is going to have to do with him. And it didn't. It and just went straight to eyes. Yeah. And I forgot which other one did that as well. The sixth. The sixth. Yes. The sixth one too. And... That was it? Well, and also, I guess, Genesis 2. The one, the, also, hang on. Okay, yes, you have Genesis, that makes false promises. The sixth one, the fifth one. There was another one with the baby, though. No, that's it. That's all. Right. Um, I'm just trying to make sure. Yeah, I think you're right. Which yeah, so, one? so, yeah. Okay, so are y'all good Pippa girl? Yeah, I mean, I think a final thought would just be, you know, um, this series, as a series, it sucks, but at least you know now which ones the good ones are, which ones are worth watching, and you don't have to, you know, waste your time watching the other ones. Okay. I shall run up my entire thoughts of everything of this whole damn franchise. I'm saved right now. Fuck this entire franchise. God damn it, son of a bitch! Why you even? Why you people even made a children tour, a children corn two? Let alone a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh. What the fuck, Dimension Films? What the fuck you mean? Have this entire franchise you're gonna do it, but fuck nothing. God damn it, son of a bitch! God, fuck this entire series. The only exception to the is just like the first, the third, and six. That's it. That's all you need to watch. That's all. Fuck everything else. I mean, god damn it. Ugh. Okay, I'll say it right now. This whole franchise is just so scatterbrained. It's so up and down. It doesn't know what the fuck it want to be. I would say that like if it had like one film company doing this entire franchise of movies. It would, it probably would have been adequate to that. I mean, you know what? I say right now, watch the Friday the Thirteenth movies. Watch the Nightmare on Elm Street from movies. Fuck, watch the Halloween movies because Friday the Thirteenth. Well, you know, as much it, it's repetitive, I know, but like they're all fun movies. They all felt like they all kind of like planned out, and at least they're consistent. Yes. Same thing with Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, shit. You, there's even a lot more good sequels on Nightmare on Elm Street than Children of Corn. Yeah, I mean, at least you know, like, what 
the main characters can do and can't do. In this movie, it just keeps changing. You know, possession, voodoo, all this other crap. It's just like, it's not one clear idea. You know what? I mean, go so far as to say, you know what? Watch the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies or watch the Leprechaun. You know what? Yeah, watch the Leprechaun movies. Fuck, watch the Leprechaun movies because you know you could be laughing throughout that entire movie because like I kill a leprechaun. Are you fucking serious? And yes, the, the kill a leprechaun. It's a much fun movie than any. You know, yeah, watch any of those leprechaun movies. Hell, you know, watch the fourth Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. It's stupid as shit. It it, it didn't include why they even made this, but it's, you know what? I have fun with it. It was that dumb, but it was so cool. Well, not really cool. Matthew McConaughey is in it. Hey, hey, hey. And uh, Zanel Zedweger. Yeah. But god damn fuck. Children of the Corn movies. The exception? The third and sixth. That's it. That is all you need to Even watch. Even though the third one isn't as much a Children of the Corn movie. But as an individual movie, it's good. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say it right now. There's someone out there. Some YouTuber who's like, you know, he's probably like 2 or 13. I'm not going to say his name or his channel, but I'm saying right now, kid, okay, you're like maybe 13, 14, maybe 15 years old, okay? I'm saying right now to you, you're, you're still young, so I know with, you know, peop, you know kids, including myself, you know, our taste, it would change in, in our movies, you know? We don't mean like the same movie that we used to love that... During the past, but say it right now, kid. Fuck you. Say it right now. Fuck you. God, you keep on saying that, like, oh, these movies are awesome. Smack you right now. Like, no. 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 Shit, I always say, like, watch Seed of Chucky any day of the fucking week. That was more fun. I don't watch Seed of Chucky right now. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I was kind of shocked that. This kid liked all of the movies, but um, like Chris said, the kid's young, so it's forgivable, and it's alright, and don't worry, we didn't dislike his video, and we didn't harass him about it or say nothing to him. I can say it right now, fuck him. And you know what, whoever else, uh, many people we may know, many people we may not know, I, 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 so like and subscribe you know to the channel you know i hope you enjoy this children of corn boo extravaganza movie fest and i hope you enjoy a halloween scary oh, oh, oh. And, uh, and i hope you enjoy this you know uh, but do you have anything else you have to say we're gonna go enjoy some cake Yes. Cake, 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 cake. Till, till then. Children of Corn. Not the first one, but the rest of you see this exception with three and six. <gasps> Fuck you! You slimy cocksucker! Fuck you! Screw you! Damn, you're loud. I have neighbors, you know. Ugh. <sighs>